Hey guys, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Mr. Lee, and today I'm going to be explaining uh, today's uh, topic. I'm going to explain uh, current electricity to you guys. And specifically, we're going to start looking at current electricity uh, and how we measure electricity. Now, when we measure electricity, or to ask someone to measure electricity, is a really vague question. Uh, if I asked you to say, measure this water, if I just said, measure this water, You'd have questions going on in your mind. You'd be, uh, you'd be thinking, what are you asking me? Are you asking me to measure how much water there is? Are you asking me to measure the flow rate of the water? Are you asking me to measure the water pressure? What are you asking me? The same thing applies to electricity. You can't just measure electricity. You can measure certain aspects of electricity, but you can't just measure electricity on its own. So the three ways we measure electricity are listed here. All right, three, three main uh, ways. So to understand how you measure electricity, you need to understand current, voltage, and resistance. And now you're not gonna get any further in this topic until you finally understand current, voltage, and resistance. So I'm gonna try and explain them to you guys today. To best understand uh, physics in general, or science in general, it really helps to have the right mental model, all right? So to understand electricity, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, electricity as though it's water, okay? So the first thing to understand is current, all right? What current is, is it's the flow of electricity. It's the flow of electricity. How much electricity or how much electrons is flowing through a circuit? When we talk about water, it's the exact same thing. When current is... Uh, which way the water is flowing and how much water is flowing. So let's say in this little, in this path, in attempt one, I just pour a little tiny trickle down. All right, I'm sure if you guys can see that. That's just a little, little tiny trickle. All right, that's not a lot of current because there's not a lot of water flowing down. The same would be for uh, uh, electricity. If that was electrons going down, there wouldn't be a lot of electrons going down, uh, there, and so therefore it wouldn't be a high current. However, if I pour a lot of water all at once, that's a higher current. If that was the same for electricity, uh, and you, you, you saw lots and lots of electrons going down all at once, that's a higher current. All right? So that's current. Voltage is how much energy those electrons have. So it's got nothing to do with the amount of electrons. Voltage is all about how much energy those electrons have. So I'm going to try and simulate voltage here uh, with water pressure. All right. So I've got one bottle here. This bottle I've got, uh, I've got in both these bottles. No, sorry, I've got one bottle here. I'm going to squeeze out a lot of water. And because it's all being squeezed out together, this water has a lot of pressure. It's all coming out really fast, okay? But if I just took and went back to this jar and I just drip, trickled it down ever so slowly, the water is taking a lot longer to get there. It's, it's taking its time. The water has less energy, but here the water has more energy. And that would be the same for voltage, all right? Now, People get current and voltage mixed up all the time, okay, all the time. So what I really want you guys to do in this lesson, try and revise for yourself the difference between current and voltage until you absolutely get, okay? Don't learn anything else until you learn these two things, all right? I'm going to further explain current and voltage right now. Current and voltage uh, have different effects on us humans, all right? We often see labels that say, this object has uh, 1,000 volts, and we just think, oh, that's actually really dangerous. But it's not the voltage that's actually dangerous. It's the current, and I'll explain why. Let's say that this little person here was you, all right? And you are in the path of a massive stream. If I can get you to stand up, there we go. All right, so you're in the pathway of the stream. Now, I've got two bottles here. One of them has a lot of, uh, a lot of water, 
one of them doesn't. So, I'm going to squirt this water at, at, at this person. Did you see it? Did you see me squirt the water? You probably couldn't on the, this camera, but there was just tiny drops that came out, all right? Now this time I'm going to squirt this bottle at this little person, all right? The little person fell and, and gone, dead, all right? The difference, what was the difference between these two? Was it the way I squeezed it? No, I squeezed both bottles the exact same way. What the difference was, was the amount of water in it, okay? That's the difference between voltage and, and current. Both of these bottles, if we're simulating electricity here, both of these bottles have the same amount of voltage, all right? I, they both had the same amount of energy, but they had different amounts of current. They had different amounts of electrons. So if this person was, was subject to a, a really high amount of voltage, it doesn't matter unless there's a high amount of current. So it's not the voltage that kills you, it's the current, all right? Current is the thing, uh, current is a measure of how many electrons there are. And if you've got too many electrons flying through your body, that's deadly, all right? The last thing to know is resistance. Resistance is basically what's blocking, what's blocking the flow of electrons, all right? What's, what's there to help slow down that current and help decrease the voltage, okay? So, resistance can be modeled in, with water. If I say, bent up this part here, all right? If I bent it up, and then I started pouring the water down, It actually takes longer and it's harder for the water to travel down this path than it would what it would be if I just traveled it down a really smooth and soft path, all right? In electricity, we see resistance in wires. If, if a wire is really frayed uh, or if uh, a conductor uh, is really wide and then goes narrow and then goes back to wide, that's resistance because that's stopping and slowing down the path of electrons. It's making it harder for those electrons to travel through. Just like how it's harder for the water to travel, travel down this crinkled path versus, versus this nice and straight path. All right, that's these three concepts. Now, I'm gonna uh, flesh that out a little bit more with this PowerPoint. So get out your notes, guys. Like I said before, current is the flow of electrons across a circuit. Now, remember, Current electricity doesn't work unless you have a circuit like this, all right? If this circuit is disconnected, the electrons can't flow through anymore. Now, we've got two types of currents, direct current and alternating current, all right? Direct current just refers to when the electrons flow all the way around the circuit like a circle. Alternating current is when they just shuffle back and forth throughout this, uh, the current like this. So they, the electrons are shuffling back, or they're moving all the way around, all right? So that's the two ways that, uh, that current can flow. Current is measured with an ammeter, and is measured, the measurement of current is amperes, or amps for short. So uh, amps are an indication of how much charge is flowing through a space per second, all right? So you can have uh, a, lie, a high, high charge flowing through a space per second, so it's high amps, or you can have low amps. That's a measurement of current. Voltage, like I said before, is how much energy the electrons have. It's measured with a voltmeter instead. All right. Once again, uh, circuits, uh, current, uh, current electricity needs a circuit. So as soon as that circuit's broken, there's no more. Uh, there's no more. Not going to be indicate. This voltmeter is not going to indicate any more voltage because the because uh, the current isn't going to pass through. Okay. You can still have volts in static electricity though. Uh, but a voltmeter doesn't measure with static electricity. Now, this device here changes the amount of voltage that is supplied to a circuit. Now that matters because different appliances need different amounts of voltage to work. Um, so remember, voltage is the amount of energy those, uh, those electrons have. Say uh, a light bulb here, this light bulb, this light bulb only it requires two, 220 to 200 volt. Uh, 220 to 240 
uh, volts to work, all right? Uh, it only needs that many volts. Um, if it has less than that, that amount of volts, it doesn't have enough energy to work. So that's why you need to uh, adjust the amount of uh, volts uh, that goes into a circuit because different appliances need different amounts of volts. Okay, so you've probably seen these devices, these blocks on your computer charges. These blocks are called transformers. What a transformer does is it transforms or it converts the amount of volts that is running through a circuit. So this laptop only needs 19 volts to run. However, our typical Australian PowerPoints always give 240 volts. Uh, no more, no less, it just always pumps out 240 volts worth of energy, okay? So that many volts is coming through. That's actually too much, uh, too much volts for our computer. So that's why we need transformers uh, for our appliances to work. Phones would sometimes use, uh, yeah, phones use six volts or cameras use 6.5, laptops uh, use uh, 19 volts. But just for now, understand that there's a sweet spot for every device in terms of the amount of energy that it can take, the amount of volts it can take. So yeah, it's a transformer. So batteries, batteries as a power supply. Uh, there are three main types of batteries, okay? Uh, we got wet cells, which are like this. We've got uh, a bunch of conductors that are sitting in uh, and submerged in a liquid electrode that is also a conductor. Uh, these are like car batteries, okay? We've also got dry cells, uh, which is like your typical battery, uh, like that. Um, and this is just uh, one electrode wrapped in another. Um, and then we've also got uh, photovoltaic cells or solar cells. Uh, and as you can probably guess, these are batteries uh, or so cells that can convert uh, solar energy into uh, into normal energy, into ele electrical energy, that is. Now, the main thing to remember with batteries is they always have a positive end and a negative end, okay? The voltage is always, the current, sorry, is already set to flow one way, and it won't flow any other way. And the last thing to quickly talk about is resistance. Like I said before, resistance is anything that will reduce, uh, that is there to inhibit the flow of electrons, okay? So we can see in this image here, we've got the voltage that's pushing the current through. The resistance is trying to stop that, okay? So uh, you can change the amount of resistance in a few different ways. It's affected by the material. Some, uh, some uh, materials have high resi resistance and some, some is low. Uh, you can change the length. So it's a lot harder for electrons to go along this really long line uh, than it is for this short one. And thickness, if the, this thick one, it's so, much, it's so much easier for the electrons to pass through than this thinner one, okay? So they're the three ways we can change resistance. Um, now resistance is actually measured in a unit called ohms, okay? Uh, so if you have more ohms, that's, uh, that's more resistance, okay? And resistance is good. Resistance is important because like these, uh, like these transformers on your laptop chargers, these transformers have the job of uh, increasing the resistance in a circuit so that it decreases the voltage and the current, okay? When you want, you want, you sometimes want more resistance to prevent damage to other places, okay? So, uh, remember, conductors, and we've, you probably mentioned uh, or heard this term before, but a conductor is anything that um, allows electrons to pass through. If something's a good conductor, it has low resistance. It's easy for those electrons to pass through. So metals are co good conductors. Copper and aluminium, uh, they're really good conductors. Uh, but we have actually got some metals that are poor conductors, like tung tungsten and nichrome. Uh, they're, they're good for other things. Um, and when you've got something that's a poor conductor, it's called an insulator, okay? So our wires, are coated in plastic because plastic is an insulator. Uh, plastic is stopping that electricity from coming out uh, and, and creating circuits elsewhere, and it's restricting the circuit to only stay within this wire. So uh, plastics uh, are insulators, wood and rubber, they're insulators. Uh, so that is why we have insulators. 
Okay, so that's today's lesson. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of the different aspects of electricity and how we measure electricity, okay? Uh, down below on sector, you're gonna see uh, instructions for you to do this lesson. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.